Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth video of the Digging Winning Streaming Guide. In today's video, I will show you what settings to use in OBS Studio. So let's get into it. And in case you guys haven't done it yet, be sure to check out our free Digging Winning Streaming Packets to make your stream look great. So we're gonna go into the settings here. And the first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go into stream and you want to choose the service that you wanna use, basically the platform that you want to stream on. In my case, it's gonna be Twitch. And all you have to do is click here on the connect account button and it gives you a login window. And all you have to do is log in and OBS will do everything else. So once you've done that, you want to go to output and the output mode I use advanced and it sounds advanced, but it isn't. So let me walk you through it. For the streaming, we want to use the audio track one. They recently added a new feature, which is the Twitch VOD track. What you basically can do is you can basically choose what track you want to send to Twitch and what track you want to use for the VOD only so what you could do is you could for example send the audio track with music to the twitch live stream and send to vod the audio track without music and people think this will prevent them from getting dmc8 but this is not the case you can still get dmc8 for your live stream as well so basically this feature doesn't really help you that much so i don't use it myself now, what you want to do is you don't want to use the X264 encoder, but you actually want to use the new one if you have that option available. There you go. And the rescale output, you don't tick because any scaling that you do will cost performance. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to change the bitrate. This really depends on how good your internet is as well as at what kind of resolution you're streaming at. Uh, for poker, it's mostly to... You know, 2500 is a great place to start. Even 2000 is going to be good enough. Um, but if your internet is really good like mine, you can increase this to 6000, which is the limit of a of Twitch in this case. Preset, I, uh, my PC is able to really maximize all of this. Um, if you are having issues with lag and stuff, you can always try turning this down as this will help the performance. Um, only the quality will decrease, of course. Then the next thing what you want to do is you want to go into the recording panel. Here I you select the recording path, so where you want your VODs to be stored. Um, why you want to record while you're streaming as well is so you have a local recording which you can use to edit your videos and create clips. Now for the recording format, they actually recommend you to use MKV. Uh, I always use MP4 myself though, but there is a risk. The risk is that when OBS crashes, your recording cannot be restored. But I personally never had issues with my OBS crashing and even when it did, my file was still fine. So use it at your own risk, but the benefit of recording in MP4 is that you can plug it into Premiere Pro right away and start editing, whereas with the MKV, you got to use the Remux function of OBS first, um, which you can do by just going to file and then click on Remux. It's a really uh, self-explanatory. So I personally record in MP4. Now, this is the next thing that's uh, interesting, which is what audio track do you want to record? Me personally, I use multiple audio tracks to record. The reason why is because I've got an audio track for my mic, I've got an audio track for my desktop. I split them. And the reason why I split them is because Imagine you're, for example, recording a podcast or imagine you're playing poker and you are playing music, but you want to edit. That's why I always split my audio tracks. In this case, I'm going to use two and number three and audio track one I use to stream. And this will basically contain both my um, mic and my, my desktop audio. Otherwise, the people that are watching your stream can't hear one or the other. So make sure that in streaming, audio track is set to one and recording it's set to two and three. And for the encoder, you can choose the use stream encoder. This will be the best performance, uh, give you the best performance. Uh, if you want to be able to pause your recordings while recording. So let's say you're streaming for seven hours and you say, okay, uh, I only want to record certain parts. Then you can use another encoder than the use stream encoder one. And then you are able to pause it and you're also able to set different settings. But this, uh, me personally had worse performance with this and I always just work with the whole stream file basically. So I always le uh, left this at use stream encoder. Uh, audio, I never really changed anything. Same for the replay buffer. So once we've set all that, we can go to audio. Um, just make sure that your mic is enabled and then select the mic that you want to use. And same for the desktop audio, make sure this is set to default or whatever headset you're using basically.
All right, then the next thing we are wanna do is go into video. We already set the base canvas resolution in the first video and then the output scaled, I would keep the same. This will give you the best performance, but imagine you are having lag and you are not able to stream at 1920 by 1080p. You wanna turn this down or imagine your internet's good and not good enough. You also want to move this down. Your stream will look better at 720p where your bitrate can keep up then at 1080p and where your bitrate can't keep up or where at 1080p where your PC is just not strong enough and your game is lagging or your stream is lagging. So there's nothing wrong with turning, turning this down. You can try out 1280 by 720p and if you want to go in between, you can also go for 1600 by 900. Then the next thing is the FPS values. I actually have to set myself at 50 uh, PAL and that's because my uh, camera DSLR is recording in 50 uh, frames per second. But let's say you live in the US and you are, are in an uh, NTSC region, you want to set this at 60. And just like that, you basically have all your settings already. You can also decide to use hotkeys. Personally, I'm using an Elgato uh, Stream Deck for this that makes it really easy. You don't have to use any hotkeys on your keyboard anymore. So you also don't run into the issue where you're playing a game, you're hitting a certain keystroke and all of a sudden you're switching scenes or whatever. So you don't have to worry about any of that anymore with the Elgato Stream Deck. So I highly recommend that. So you don't have to use hotkeys in OBS. But in case you do, decide to use hotkeys in OBS. Make sure to run OBS as an administrator to make sure you don't have to tap into OBS before being able to switch scene. And this, you know, allows you to play the game, play poker or whatever, without having to actually click in OBS and then have to hit the button. So make sure to run OBS as ad, uh, administrator. Then the next thing you're gonna want to do is if you are running a poker stream is that you want to add a stream delay. And you can do this by clicking on enable and then you want to add a duration. For a poker stream, for a cash game stream, two and a half minutes, three minutes should really be enough. For tournament streams, you want to go with minimum four minutes to be safe and really more to six minutes to be really safe. Just to make sure that people cannot stream snipe you and see what kind of cards you are having. But if you are not streaming poker but you're just streaming video games, of course you want to turn this off so you're having a live interaction with uh, with your viewers. So once we have set all that, all that up, we click on OK. And as you can see, it now created my mic and desktop audio as uh, in the audio mixer. So what we want to do is we want to go into the settings. We want to go into properties in advanced audio properties, I should say. And then here we've got all your advanced audio properties. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that for track one, which will be streamed, all files are selected. But in the second track, we only wanted our mic. So what do we do? We have our mic, we keep that enabled and everything else we disable. And the same we do for the third track, which is gonna be just our desktop audio. Um, so we disable everything else and just keep the desktop audio activated. And just like that, everything is set up and you should be good to stream. So hope you guys liked the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.